Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 12 days to go to your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to be focusing on inequalities. So we're going to be looking at inequalities in number lines, we're going to be looking at solving inequalities and things like that. So in this video, I'm going to go through inequalities. There'll be some questions for you to try, so remember to press pause and try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be recapping inequalities. So we're going to start off by solving inequalities, and then we're going to look at how to represent inequalities in number lines, and then we're going to look at how to deal with uh, inequality questions that involve integers and which integers satisfy certain inequalities. So here we've got some solving inequalities questions. We've got solve x subtract 7 is less than 20. And we've also got solve x over 3 is greater than or equal to 6. So in terms of solving inequalities, we can solve them in the same way that we solve equations. We just need to make sure that instead of using the equal sign, we use the inequality symbol. So feel free to press pause and to solve these inequalities now. So in terms of the first one, we've got x subtract 7 is less than 20. Well, if we wanted to solve this inequality, we don't want this subtract 7 on the left-hand side. So let's add 7 to both sides. So if we add 7 to the left-hand side, we had x subtract 7. We're adding 7 to get rid of the subtract 7, so we'll just be left with x. And then we've got our less than symbol. And then 20 plus 7 is 27. So that means that x is less than 27. So we've solved that inequality. That If we had x subtract 7 is less than 20, that means that x is less than 27. Okay, next inequality, we've got solve x over 3 is greater than or equal to 6. So we want to solve this inequality so we don't want this divide by 3 on the left-hand side. So we're going to multiply the left-hand side by 3, and we're going to multiply the right-hand side of the inequality by 3. So x divided by 3 times 3, we're multiplying by 3 to get rid of the divide by 3, so we'll just be left with x. And then we've got our greater than or equal to symbol. And then 6 times 3 is 18, so it means x is greater than or equal to 18. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. Okay, let's look at our next questions. Okay, next to inequality. So this time we've been given solve 5x is greater than 65 and solve 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 32. So press pause now and solve these inequalities. Okay, so in terms of the first one, we've got 5 times x is greater than 65. Well, we don't want this multiplied by 5 here, so let's divide by 5 and divide by 5. So on the left-hand side, we had 5 times x. We're dividing by 5, so we'd just be left with 1x or x. Then we've got our greater than symbol, and then we've got 65 divided by 5, and 65 divided by 5 is 13. So we're going to get x is greater than 13. Okay, next inequality, we've got solve 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 32. Well, we don't want this subtract 4, and we don't want this multiplied by 3. So let's get rid of the subtract 4, so let's add 4 to both sides of the inequality. So on the left-hand side, we had 3x minus 4. We're adding 4 to get rid of the minus 4, so we're just going to be left with 3x. We've then got our less than or equal to symbol, and then 32 plus 4 is 36. So we've now got 3x is less than or equal to 36. We don't want this multiplied by 3 here, so we're going to divide both sides by 3, so divide by 3 and divide by 3. So on the left-hand side, we'll just be left with 1x, or x, is less than or equal to 12. And that's it. So we've solved our two inequalities, and if you got those, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so this time we've got solve x plus 1 is less than 10x minus 9. So feel free to press pause and to solve this now. Okay, so looking at this inequality, we've got x's on both sides, so we want to solve it, so I just want to have x's on one side of the inequality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the lowest number of x's, which is this 8x, and I'm going to subtract 8x's from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 8x from the left-hand side, and I'm going to subtract 8x from the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, we had 8x plus 1. We're subtracting the 8x, so we're just going to be left with 1. And then we've got our less than symbol, and then we had 10x take away 8x, that's going to be 2x, and we've still got our subtract 9. So we've now got 1 is less than 2x minus 9. Now we want to get the x on its own, so let's get rid of this minus 9, so let's add 9 to both sides. So 1 plus 9 is equal to 10, and then we've got that's less than, and then on the right hand side we had 2x minus 9, we're adding 9 to get rid of the minus 9, so we're just going to be left with 2x, so we've got 2x. Now we just want to have x on this right hand side, so let's divide by 2 and divide by 2. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and that's going to be less than, and 2x divided by 2 would just be x. Now in terms of this, I would tend to want to turn it around to have x is greater than 5. So instead of writing 5 is less than x, I'd say that x is greater than 5. And that's it, x is greater than 5, that's our answer. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So this time we've got solve 7 subtract x is greater than 11. So feel free to press pause now and solve this inequality. Okay, so if I was still on this inequality, I could actually approach it in two different ways. I'm going to show you both approaches now. So the first approach is, we've got a minus x here. Now, with inequalities, I tend to want to have an x rather than a minus x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add x to both sides of this inequality. So this is the first way I could approach this. So here with minus x, we're adding x to get rid of it. So minus x plus x is 0. So on this left-hand side, we'd just be left with 7. On the right-hand side, that's going to be, well, we've got our greater than symbol. And we've got 11 plus x, so 11 plus x. 
So we've added x to both sides of this inequality. Now we want to get the x on its own, so we don't want this 11 here. So let's take away 11 and take away 11. 7 take away 11 would be minus 4, and that's going to be greater than. And then this right-hand side, we had 11. We're taking away 11, so we're just going to be left with x. So we've got the minus 4 is greater than 11. And if we turn this around, we'd have x is smaller than minus 4. So x is smaller than minus 4. Just turning it around, running it the other way around. So instead of being a minus 4 is greater than x, x is smaller than minus 4. And that's it. So we've solved that inequality. So we've got x is smaller than minus 4. So that's one way you could solve that inequality. I'm just going to write the answer up here. x is smaller than minus 4. Just so that whenever we solve it using our second approach, we can make sure we get the same answer. Now, in terms of solving this inequality, another approach could have been to take 7 away from both sides. So take away 7 and take away 7. If we took away 7 from the left-hand side, we would be left with minus x. So we get minus x on the left-hand side on its own. Then we'd have the greater than symbol. And on the other side of the inequality, we had 11 take away 7. And 11 take away 7 is 4. So we've got the minus x is greater than 4. Now, whenever you've got an inequality, you can change the signs. But if you change the signs, you have to turn the inequality symbol around. So here we could change this minus x to an x. And we could change this 4 to a minus 4. We're just multiplying those both by minus 1 or changing the signs. But if we do that and we change the sign, we have to change this inequality symbol around. So instead of being greater than, we're now going to have less than. So we'd have x is less than negative 4. So if you change the signs in an inequality, you have to change the inequality symbol around. And if you look, that's the same as the answer we had. And that's it. Okay, so we're now going to look at how to draw inequalities on number lines. And I'm going to show you how to do 4. And then I'm going to give you some to try yourself. So the first question says, show this inequality on a number line. And we've got x is greater than negative 1. So if I want to show x is greater than negative 1 on a number line, I go to negative 1. Now, because it's just greater than, we do a hollow circle. And then, because it's greater than minus 1, we do an arrow to the right. And all the values of x to the right of minus 1 would work. So x is greater than minus 1. And that's it. And because it's greater than, we do a hollow circle. And that's it. OK, let's look at another one. OK, this time we've got x is greater than or equal to 2. So because it's greater than or equal to 2, well, we go to 2. And because it's greater than or equal to, instead of doing a hollow circle, we do a shaded in circle like so. And it's greater than or, e and it's greater than or equal to 2, so we're going to do an arrow to the right. So all the values of x that are either 2 or greater than 2 would work. And that's shown by this colored in circle and an arrow to the right. OK, next. OK, next, we're going to show x is less than negative 2 on the number line. So because it's negative 2, we're going to go to negative 2. And it's less than, so it's not less than or equal to. It's just less than, so we do a hollow circle. And it's less than negative 2, so we do an arrow to the left. And that's x is less than negative 2. OK, and our final one. OK, this time we've got x is less than or equal to 3. So because it's less than or equal to, we're going to do a shaded in circle at 3. So shaded in circle at 3. And it's x is less than or equal to it, so we're going to do an arrow to the left. And we've done an arrow to the left because all the values that are either 3 or less than 3 would work. And that's it. So that's how you draw inequalities on number lines. So here's some for you to try. OK, so can you now press pause and show these inequalities on a number line? OK, so in terms of the first one, we've got x is less than 4. So we would do a hollow circle at 4 and an arrow to the left. So that would be x is less than 4, like so. So that's the first one. OK, the next one, x is greater than negative 2. So we go to negative 2 and we do a hollow circle. And it's greater than, so we do an arrow to the right. OK, next one, x is greater than or equal to 2. Now, because it's greater than or equal to 2, we do a shaded in circle at 2. And it's greater than or equal to, so we do an arrow to the right, like so. And the last one, x is, so we've done that one and that one. And then our last one, x is less than or equal to 1. So let's draw that one. So less than or equal to 1, so we're going to do a shaded in circle at 1. And because it's less than or equal to it, we do an arrow to the left, like so. So that's the four inequalities. And if you got those, well done. OK, now let's have a look at some questions that involve solving and also representing the answer on a number line. So the question says solve 2x minus 1 is less than 7. Assure the answer on a number line. So feel free to press pause and to solve this now. OK, so to begin with, we'd write 2x minus 1 is less than 7. So let's solve the inequality. So let's add 1 and add 1. So we get 2x is less than 8. And then divide by 2 and divide by 2. And we get that x is less than 4. And then we need to show this on the number line. So we do a hollow circle of 4 and an arrow to the left. And that is x is less than 4. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. OK, so now let's have a look at some questions that involve us trying to find which integers satisfy a particular inequality. So here we've got an inequality, and it is that 2n is greater than 5, but less than or equal to 10. So if I wanted to find the integers that would satisfy this inequality, the first thing I would do is rather than having 2n, I want it to be n. So I'm going to divide everything here by 2. So if I divide this whole inequality by 2, 5 divided by 2 would be 2.5. 
is less than, 2n divided by 2 would just be n, and then that'd be less than or equal to, and 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So if we have 5, so if we have that 2n is greater than 5, but less than or equal to 10, then if we divide everything by 2, we'd have the n is greater than 2.5, but less than or equal to 5. So we want to find the integers that satisfy this. So remember integers, they're your numbers such as 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 0, minus 5, minus 7, minus 20, and so on. So if we have a look at this, we want to find the integers that satisfy this. So 2, no, n's bigger than or equal to 2.5. 3, 3 would work. 4 would work. And it's less than or equal to 5, so because it can be equal to 5, that would be 5 as well. So that means the integers that satisfy this inequality would be 3, 4, and 5. And let's just check it. Let's go back up to the original one. If n was equal to 3, 2 times 3 is equal to 6, and 6 is greater than 5 and less than or equal to 10, that would work. 4, 2 times 4 is equal to 8, and 8 is bigger than 5 but less than or equal to 10. And 5, well, 2 times 5 is 10, and 5 is greater than 5 but less than or equal to 10, and that's it. So our integers to satisfy that inequality would be 3, 4, and 5. Okay, let's have a look at one for you to try. Okay, so let's have a look at another question. So this is one for you to try, so feel free to press pause and to try this now. So the question asks us to find the integers that satisfies the inequality 2n plus 4 is greater than 1 but less than 10. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is to solve this. So I'm going to take away 4 from everything. So that would be if I take away 4, take away 4, and take away 4. 1 take away 4 is equal to minus 3. That's going to be less than 2n plus 4 take away 4 is just 2n. And then we had 10 take away 4, that would be 6. So we've taken away 4 from everything. Now we're going to divide everything by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, and divide by 2. So minus 3 divided by 2 would be minus 1.5, and that's going to be less than. 2n divided by 2 is just n, and 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. So we've got the n is greater than minus 1.5, but less than 3. Now we want the integers, so let's think of those integers. So minus 2, no, that wouldn't work. Minus 1, yes, that would work, so minus 1. 0 would work. 1 would work. 2 would work. 3 wouldn't work because it has to be less than 3. So that's it. They're the integers that satisfy that inequality. And let's just check it. Minus 1. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Plus 4 is 2. Fantastic. That would work. 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 4 is 4. That would work. 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 4 is 6. That would work. And 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 4 is 8. And that would work as well. And that's it. And that's it. So in today's video, we've looked at our inequalities, our greater than, our greater than or equal to, our less than and our less than or equal to. And we've also looked at how to deal with things such as number lines and solving inequalities and things like that. So hopefully you find this video useful. I'd highly recommend for inequalities that you try the practice questions today. So if you look in the description below, there's a link to the practice questions on inequalities. So I really hope you found this video useful. There's 12 days to go to GCC maths exam. I just want to say at this point, make sure you believe in yourself. You're doing really, really well. You can do this. You can get a fantastic grade in your GCSE Mavs exam. Keep up the hard work. You've been watching these videos. Keep up the hard work and you're going to do fantastically well. And I'll see you tomorrow for your next video. Cheers. Bye.